So hi everyone, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. I'm Adeline, the editor of 12080 Magazine. And today we speak to Dr. Cindy Chan, pediatrician from Sunway Medical Center on the topic of living with an autistic child during the MCO or currently known as the CMCO period. So Dr. Cindy, thank you for joining us today. Happy to be here. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. No problem. And, um, you know, just to, um, our first question is actually, you know, the autistic children may find it a bit difficult to understand what's going on at the moment with the pandemic as well as the current lifestyle situation that we all have to adjust to. So what would you suggest or how would you suggest parents tackle this situation in terms of explaining to their autistic child about this? Well, you know, Adeline, I think that you, this is an unprecedented event, isn't it? It's a worldwide crisis and, and no one's prepared for it. As, we don't have any experience with it. And as an adult, as a parent, even as a neurotypical child, um, we will need time to adjust uh, amidst all this chaos. So I think the first thing that we have to, um, to remember as parents to a child with special needs, especially a child with communication problems like in autism, um, we have to remember that our child will need even more time to adjust and more of our patients compared to other children. Yeah? So that, that's the first um, message that parents need to internalize and to accept. Yeah, this is a crisis. Uh, there are limits to what families and um, um, you know adults can even do. So, what more children? Um, I think uh, one of the important approaches that parents have found, even during non-COVID times, is the use of social stories. So, children with autism have got significant difficulties with expressing themselves um, and communicating with others, not just socially, not just uh, with language, but even using nonverbal ways. They, they have difficulties processing certain concepts. Uh, they are slower to process information as well. Uh, there are many reasons for this. Language is one of them. They have language limitations, but even in the very verbal kids, Sometimes they have difficulty understanding situations in the right context. So social stories is, uh, is a way that many parents have found useful to deliver information as well as embed coping skills in them. Uh, it's very visual. It uses storytelling about a certain situation. Yeah, it tells a story about a very specific situation. And what it does is it breaks down the situation into very small and manageable steps for the child to understand. And when there is a difficulty, the story will also incorporate certain coping skills that the child can use. So storytelling is a powerful tool. So social stories is incorporating storytelling with very visual, very pictorial ways of delivering a message and coping skill. So that's the first thing that parents turn to. Um, and also, you know, when we are families staying together, cooped up, um, you know, we must uh, um, try and uh, show, uh, walk the talk, uh, model hands-on uh, things that are important, like hand washing make a song to go with it. Uh, when we say wash your hands for 20 seconds, what does that mean? So some of the songs that we can use that are familiar, are the, like the alphabet song, you know, uh, or sing a familiar song that's longer than 20 seconds that the child enjoys. Um, what do you mean by social distancing? So we can play a game and put like little uh, cardboard um, uh, things on the floor that are color coded and say, okay, you stand here and I have to stand there. And then we make a game. You are standing closer than that two meter or that one meter distance thing. Say, oh no, no, this is two meters. So you you get one point if you if if you remember to stand at two meters and things like that. So really, um, teaching them this really new skills in a very fun and engaging way uh, will be useful. Yeah, and also wearing a mask. Now, there, there are 
children who will have difficulty wearing a mask. Um, so you just really need to be patient and make it very um, non-threatening. Yeah, uh, work with all kinds of fabrics, different patterns things with buttons onto their caps and things like that are things that parents have found useful. Um, and, and, you know, you can teach all you want, but you must also sh give children or any individuals uh, with communication problems a way to understand things and to support their understanding. You need to give them opportunities to express their feelings, their anxiety, what are they worried about, you know, if your child is verbal, you can have very simple discussions back and forth, get them to ask you questions. When you're reading a social story with them, pause and say, what do you think of this? Um, how do you feel about this? Things like that. You know, um, there are other ways as well. If your child is into art or music, you know, or messy play uh, or sand play, these are ways to get them to talk about what they must be processing, their feelings. It's not so easy for children with autism to express themselves. So we need to be creative in giving them a way to express their feelings. Okay. And now, Dr. Cindy, so you mentioned about social stories. Could you give us a short example, perhaps, about what a social story is? Right, so um, for example, that's uh, maybe very topical now. Certain public parks have been open already, right? Or going to the, uh, or, or like this, this child really wants to go out. Uh, so then we can build a social story. You can download uh, from internet uh, resources. There are loads of resources now. You, some of them are already pre prepared, but some are like templates in PowerPoints that parents can put the child's picture in and edit the names and things like that to make it very personal and very um, uh, adapted to the child. So things like, okay, when I, uh, like maybe the thing is going out for a walk. Okay. Okay. So there's a, there's a picture of the mommy and the child and the picture holds, uh, the uh, picture has a picture of the real child mom holding hands with the mom so the child doesn't run off and the mom can make sure that the child can maintain social distancing from other people and below that picture maybe you have a very simple sen sentence that you can repeat the same sentence every it's like a script you know okay. when i go out or i will hold mommy's hand things like that and then you flip and the next page might show that if there's somebody that's going to come near you you know, things like that. Uh, when there is somebody that's coming near us, mommy will hold my hand and we might cross the street. Because these are things that can be unexpected to children and they don't like things that are unexpected. Yeah. So it tells them what to expect, social stories, but at every step, they will also try and embed something to help them cope if that thing happens. Okay. So that picture might show them wear a mask. You know, if I feel hot and bothered in my mask, um, I can tell my mom, you know, and mom can help me fix the mask or might take it out for a while and put it back on. So that's just an example of um, really adapt, uh, yeah, trying to adapt the social story for that family. Okay, nice. Thank you so much. And uh, what are some of the challenges that our parents might be facing at the moment when it comes to you know living with an autistic child at home and uh, what are some of your suggestions to them on how to address it as well i think for everyone the main challenge is all our usual routines are like chucked out of the window now <laughs> okay uh, no, nobody has you uh, know in the first couple of weeks of, of the mco i think uh, we all had to adapt to a loss of our usual routine, and we had to quickly scramble to get a new routine on board. But for families with children with autism, the one consistent thing that they need to, um, to make sure um, is to have routine in their lives. So how do you maintain a daily routine when your usual routines are all disrupted? Yeah, so, um, and individuals, have of, with autism have a very high need for routine and there are many factors for this so i would recommend you know um, take a moment plan with your family build a new routine a new routine yeah uh, 
like I said, uh, some, some children with autism are not that verbal. And even if they are verbal, they still need a higher level of multiple methods of delivering messages. So have a visual chart, right? Really uh, with, a, with a picture uh, showing according to a schedule what to expect in the day. Okay, um, or if the child prefers it and if the child is able to read and write, have a daily list. Okay, it helps for us, so it will help for the child to know what to expect next. So, daily routines are very important. Build a new routine, right? Um, and why routines are really important to help families overcome challenges during the MCO, especially when they have a child with special needs, is this anxiety. Yeah. The anxiety is pervasive. Yeah, every one of us, we have our ups and downs. Some some days we feel that you know we are coping well, and some days we are not coping so well, and we start to worry about maybe not just for ourselves but for our loved ones as well. So this sense of it's a sense of loss of a it's a sense of a loss of control, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So in a child with communication difficulties, learning difficulties, um, difficulties processing uh, feelings and thoughts, um, you will have a lot more challenging behavior, like meltdowns and tantrums. Children with autism might steam, you know, steaming is a type of repetitive behavior that we often see in children with autism. So understanding, acknowledging that everyone's level of anxiety is higher, it's going to be a big challenge to families, especially families who have, who have children or individuals with autism. So acknowledging that anxiety will be there and being proactive in managing it before it peaks. Now, as a parent, I would say, you know, you're not alone. You are not alone. You must reach out to other parents. At this point in time, your doctors, your therapists, your teachers may not be the most important people in your life. I, you really need to work uh, to reach out to other parents, other fam families who are also having children on the autism spectrum and also prioritizing your own mental health. You need to take care of your own mental health, your own physical health before you can take care of other people who depend on you. Prioritize that first. Accept that there are limitations. This is a crisis. This is a pandemic. So with all that, try and model calm. Being calm. Being empathetic. Not just to yourself, but to your children, to your families. You know? um, and so you, you and your child will both need more space. And that's totally okay. Make that okay. You know? Um, and also acknowledging anxiety in your child. If your child is verbal, he might steam more verbally. He might have a lot more repetitive speech. He might ask you more questions repeatedly. You need to anticipate that and allow him space to steam more if he or she needs it. Providing a lot more structure to his or her day will help them know what to expect. Knowing what to expect also helps to reduce anxiety a lot. Yeah. The other big challenge I would say is, you know, like coming back to the main issues of communication, find a way that works for your family. Your child is not in the therapy center now. So whatever uh, picture exchange, communication system, visual charts or schedules that they use there, ask the teachers to share with you. Share with you ideas what you can do to simulate something like that at home. So your child has a lot more visual cues to help him communicate and to manage his day better. Now, the other thing about children with autism is sometimes they have difficulties transitioning, yeah? changing from one gear to the next, uh, switching from one activity to the next. So always try and make it a habit to ask your child, are you ready for this next? Next, we're going to do this. I, I, are you ready? And the other thing that's really helpful is try and find ways to offer choices as far as possible. Don't give five things to choose from if your child is not there yet. Choose, do you want to wear this purple t-shirt or this red shirt? Do you want to have your fries on a small dish or do you want to have fries next to your rice? Things like that. Because being able to make choices, small tiny ones throughout the day, can make your child feel very successful and less anxious. 
So, so these are just some of the, I think, one, some of the challenges that families might face when you have a child with autism, yeah, being cooked up at home. Yeah. Oh, and think sensory issues. Uh -huh. You know, children with autism, other than they have, uh, other than language difficulties, they have a lot of sensory processing differences. They might be very sensitive to certain stimulation and that might really distress them. Um, so sometimes when you see when you when you see that they are more anxious or they have difficulty handling this sensory overload or it they might be sensory seeking. Yeah. Cut some slack, give them more space to steam more. It's their way of self-coping. Uh, but in another way, it can help them to calm themselves down, helps them to regulate their feelings and help them to manage this. So you can work together with your child's ther therapist or go online to see in your daily schedule for the child, if you can, try and build in regular sensory breaks or have some kind of what we call sensory diet in your child's daily routine. Mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, like if your child really craves motor or vestibular kind of input, you can think about getting a DIY obstacle course with cushions and uh, uh, small chairs and things that the child can jump and climb on in a safe way, even if you're not in the same room. Um, things like if your child likes fine motor uh, sensory input, uh, some party or messy play or play-doh, even a water play session mm. at the end, like in the evenings before bath time, before dinner time, might be really helpful. You can do that in the bathroom with his bath toys, under the shower, or even in the porch. And then after that, just straight away go and have a bath and then settle down for dinner. So something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, doctor, how about say if the child has been um, asking to go outside, say to the park, for example. So the with the CM ah, okay. go, right now that the, some public areas are open or to a shopping mall, is it advisable though? As, especially since the pandem pandemic is still ongoing. Yeah. So it it really it really depends on the child what the child craves for. Uh, some children are very used to a high level of physical activity during the day and that includes outdoor time. Uh, they crave being outdoors a lot, the fresh air and the movement that uh, being outdoors allow them. Um, we you know that uh, uh, there are many leaders, parent leaders, parent advocates in our in our country that have approached the police, and uh, there are uh, SOPs in place even from before the pandemic to allow families with autism and other special needs uh, some leeway. So there are families who will bring the child out in a car for a drive-through and not ready to get down, but to maybe drive with the windows down and point things out and just get, giving them that movement and that fresh air that they need. Going to parks now, I would say, yeah, if you can maintain social distancing, so being prepared, a little bit of practice at home, a little bit of planning, maybe some role-playing, okay. you know, uh, so role it is a lot like social stories as well, but now you are acting it out with the child. Maybe grab a sibling to play along as somebody who's coming near you. Um, really practice what are the limits that you would like to enforce once you are out there, yeah, so that you feel a bit more um, ready to take that step out. Don't aim for big things first, make trips short and sweet. Okay, uh, go off peak times, you know, yep. like uh, just before the evening, people who are walking around, maybe you might go at 4, 30, it might be a bit hot, but just make it short and sweet, things like that. Yeah. Okay. And if you can, wear a mask, so that will also need a lot of preparation before that, social stories and role playing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last question, actually. Now that everybody is at home, how important is it for family support? Because I'm sure there are more family members around, right? So could you just share with us yeah. how other family members can play a role in helping this child and parents cope as well? Well, I think, you know, it, it comes down to um, making, um, I mean, um, to, make, to making a plan as a family. You, you try and include 
as many family members as possible um, in an intentional way. We, it's something like an intentional parenting approach. It's not possible to achieve everything at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have siblings of many age, ages, they are all on home based learning. Yeah. Uh, and you have to you if you don't have a helper, you have to cook, you have to clean, and you have to be your children's teachers. So it's not possible to achieve everything. Um, it's not possible to manage everything and be successful and to feel successful. Yeah. So break it down, break things down every day intentionally just maybe focus on one or two things that you want to achieve as a family um, discuss it as a family maybe write it down and pin it up on the on the fridge or something like today we will do this we will have a family meal together we will play a game to, together because in the beginning you know when you achieve when things are achievable Everyone gets motivated, right? When you are able to achieve these smaller milestones. And then when you get more and more confident, uh, you are more willing to work together as a team in a family. And it's also important to maintain, to, to, to use this time being locked up together to um, develop or to reset relationships within the family. Okay. Like with with an elder sibling and this younger child with autism, they might not have had much time with the older one in school and the younger one in therapy or going to a special school or something and parents are working. So maybe that it's an achievable family goal on a daily basis. How do you reset and reconnect with people within your, fam within your family? Mm -hmm. And things like, um, you know, if you're missing a grandparent or a teacher, um, it's also important to maintain that connection either online through Zoom or Skype or now with an easing up of the MCO, maybe the grandparents can just hop into a car, drive through the house, wave bye-bye to the child, but having that, that knowledge that, you know, you can't get down yet, you know, just but just being across the gate, that, that helps a family feel that they can stay connected. Yeah. Okay, all right. Physical activity is great too. Nice. Being, you know, like like for me, uh, it was the first time I did Zumba with my kids. So that is something very physical, very bonding, you know, and you learn a new skill. So it's really a time to get creative and um, be flexible okay. with what your child gets to learn. Yeah. It's really the best time to use technology, right, doctor? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much, doctor, for joining us today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for time. having me, Adeline. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, doctor.